chapter 1, Jeremiah, verse 4. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I form you, in the womb I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. As a prophet to the nations. So we can see here clearly what God is saying, okay? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the message. You know that it, we know that it's going to do whatever you send it out to. You can start with me. Start with this church, Father, your church. Do your will on us, Father. Bless us with your word. Give us knowledge, understanding, not only to hear, but also to uh, understand what you're saying and be obedient to your word, Father. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. When we look at verse 4, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, meaning, the Lord's going to speak right now. It says, this is what God is saying, meaning, what does the Bible say? Always, always, what does the Bible say? Verse 5. So he tells us, before I created you, before I formed you, before you were even together, I mean, you were before you became someone, I already knew you. And before I put you in your mother's womb, I put you there with a purpose from your mother's womb. And when you were born, you were, all, you were already set with the goal, with what you were going to be. You were going to be a good wife, you're going to be a, be a good mother. You're going to be, be a, a, a pastor. You're going to be a deacon. You're going to be a leader. You're going to be a role model. You're going to be an evangelist. I already had, uh, you know, my plans on you. You were born with a purpose that God is saying. So see, we were born with a purpose, and Satan knew this. So he tried to stop it from the, our mother's womb. I mean, when we were born, he already had someone there, you know, waiting for us to, to stop us from becoming what God had for us. Look at Matthew chapter 12. Matthew 12, verse 43 to 45. When an evil spirit comes out of a man, it goes through and places seeking rest and does not find it. Where did this come from? Well, we were born. Satan already said, I'm going to stop it right here. Remember when the children were born, that Pharaoh said, go kill them all? You know, but somehow he saved Moses. And then at the times that, that Jesus was born, you know, he sent out to kill those, the babies that were three or five years old. Up because, you know, between those, those years, that yeah, Jesus was born. So, so now, you know, Satan knows this, and he tries to get, uh, stop us from the very beginning. So right here it says, you know, there was an evil spirit that he put on us to uh, put us apart, to, to, you know, to get us off of God's way, of God's purpose, God's plan. So when Jesus comes to us, when Jesus, when Jesus comes to us, and we are going to receive him as our, our Lord and Savior, they have to flee, they have to leave. Verse 44. Then it says, I will return to the house I left, meaning us. We were the evil spirit's house. When it arrives, it finds it the same. It finds the house unoccupied, empty, swept and clean and put in order. So how, how can a, 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 an evil spirit come into us when we are empty, when we are unoccupied? You see, there's so many people that call themselves Christians. They have not been occupied. That's why they don't have faith. And so some people are working for the faith, you know, working that they have, like, they have faith. It's not like that. It's faith that produces the work. That's what we see because people, been, people have changed but not have not transformed. It means we, they, have come, they have become religious but not a real Christian. That's why the devil has an opportunity, I mean, because he has open doors right there. People, were not, when they're not transformed, you know, when, when people are transformed, they start speaking differently. 
They start dressing differently. They start behaving differently. Even their friends are different. They start hanging around with some people that have, you know, they have something in common. And the only time they go into the world is to go fish. I mean, they go witness. They don't stay there. And then 40, 45, verse 45, 12, 45. Then he goes and takes with him, with it, seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they go in and live there. And the final condition of that man is worse than the first. That is how it will be with this wicked generation. So, so, so we, we see the why, you know, why they, 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 come, they can come back to a person that they said they were Christian, they accepted Christ? Because it's empty. They change, but they were not transformed. And that's why they're empty, because it's not about changing, only it's about being transformed through the image of Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with salvation here. We have to be careful on this. Because people, I mean, if you see the most, most of the churches now, they, they have churches that are into entertainment, but not the truth, not the, not the word of God, not based on the word of God. Word of God. And they're deceiving so many people. So we need to be transformed, and the only way we can be transformed is with the help of the Holy Spirit. Is it easy? No, it's not easy. People say it's easy to be a Christian. No, it's not. And when we see the scripture right here, when we see the scripture, okay, first of all, Matthew chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Matthew chapter 1, I mean 4, verse 1 and 2. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Look at, look at what God is going to do with when he calls someone. He's going to test him first. Not to show himself that we are changed. It's to prove to ourselves that we can see that we are ready for ministry. We are ready to be a, a, a real Christian. Verse 2. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterwards... He was hungry, so he says, be careful. Because in time of needs, you are going to be weak, and you're going to, if you're not careful, you're going to open a door and look at what is going to happen. You're going to start being tempted and, and seduced in times of needs. And then when we go to the other scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22. Look at all that Paul had to go through as a Christian. Are they Hebrew? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I, I speak like a fool. As a fool. I am more. And labors more abundant, and stripes above measure, and prison more frequently than death. Look at what Paul had to go through. And frequently, and death often. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned three times. I was shipwrecked a night and a day. I have been in deep now. Paul said he was stricken, you know, 24. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus, minus one. What about if we received the number 40? Most of the people, when they receive that 40, they, receive, they leave the church. They get mad at someone or something. Look at how many Paul took. How many did Jesus Christ take? Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in, in the deep. In journeys often in perils of waters. In perils of robbers. In perils of my own countrymen. In perils of Gentiles. In perils in the city. In perils in the wilderness. In perils in the sea. In perils among false brothers. In weariness and toil. In nakedness. Besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. But he says, of all of that, he made it through because 
he's concerned, he's what worried him more is how to serve the churches. That was his burden. He says, I went through all of this because my worry is to please God, is to serve my brothers, serve the churches. So our worry is supposed to be is to worry about our church, our body, the body of Christ. What am I going to do to be fruitful? What am I going to do, you know, to help, to be useful in the work of God in my church? Or in missions, whatever God sends me out to. What about if we went through all those cases? Will, will you and me be able to go through what Paul went through? Right now, there's so many complaints in the, in the, press, in the, in the modern church about the message, about the music, about the, how people behave, about they did this, they didn't pay attention to me. Hey, what's more important is hearing the message of God. What does he have, what does he have for me? What does he want me to do? The voice of God, who's that? The message has a, has a name with a purpose to correct a person before it is too late. The message is personal. It is for you. It is for me. Because sometimes pastors get accused of, oh, pastor threw it at me. He, he said it to me, well... I mean, I told him something, and he did it. He did it, and he, he told me. Well, look at this. Look at this. Matthew 16, verse 21 to 26. Why did Jesus call Peter Satan? Who was he talking to? Who was he talking to, Peter or Satan? Some people say, well, he's talking to Satan. No, no, he's not. He's talking to Peter. And he put, the, and he put that demon, that Satan, he put a name to it. The message is for you. Peter. Look at this. From that time, from that time on, Jesus, uh, on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hand of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed, and on the third day he be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Lo never, Lord, never, he said. This shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. So what is he telling Peter? Peter, where were you? You didn't hear the message. I just told you my purpose for coming here. I just said what, why was I born and what I was going to go through and how I was going to die and be raised on the third day. You didn't hear that, Peter? This is a prophecy that must be fulfilled. Where were you? You didn't hear me. You know why you didn't hear me? Because you're still in the world. You are with me, but you're still in the world. Your heart is in the world. Your mind is in the world. It's not with me. And that's what's, that's what's happening in so, many, in so many Christians today. They are hearing the message, but their life, their heart is in the world, in the world still. So then he says that Peter, Peter heard the message, but he wanted, probably wanted entertainment. So he took him aside. And he says, Jesus, that must never happen. He said. And then he calls him Satan. Peter, why are you... Allowing yourself to be used or influenced by Satan? You didn't hear the word? You didn't hear the word? You are allowing yourself, you know, to be used by Satan, to, Satan, to be influenced by Satan. Hear the word. This is what's going to happen. This is what must happen. This is what it is. What the word of God says, what the Bible says, that's what it is. Where is our heart at the time to be where Jesus has commanded us to be and serve. When God says to be in, in a place and we're not there, what happened? Or sometimes we are there, but the, our heart is not there. Why? Matthew 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For 
whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? What can you give to be saved? Nothing. You don't have nothing to give. You have nothing to give. I have nothing to give. It's all free. Salvation is free. And if we're saved, we're gonna show we're going to be we're gonna change and we're going to be transformed. If we're only changing and not transforming, and we keep them behaving like the world, we're still being like, like nothing was different, just the only thing is that I have Jesus. And, and I did change, yeah, you change the way you walk. I mean, the way you, I mean, to the places you used to go to, you don't go to no more. But what about the rest? Why aren't you being transformed? Because the one that transforms is the Holy Spirit is God himself. Is he really in us to, to be transformed? So here, here he says here, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. We have to deny ourselves. It's not my will anymore. It's what does God want? What does the Bible say? That's what he's saying. And, and when he says, take up your cross and follow me, me, means, you know, there's no longer our will. It's him. And it's until death. Not for a while. It's not a part-time job. It's a full-time job to be a Christian. Any season and anywhere. And on the way to death, until death, that's what the cross means also. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1 through 19. We were, we were formed by the hand of God and set apart from our mother's womb with a purpose. Okay? We go to the, to the reference, Jeremiah chapter uh, 18, verse 1 through 7. Jeremiah. Look at what God is saying. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and then, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping, shaping, shaping from clay was mar in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this powder does? Declares the Lord. Like clay in the hands of the powder, so are you in my hands, O house of Israel. If at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down and destroyed. Look at what is God is saying. My word is so powerful. Look at what it's going to do. It's going to build or it's going to destroy. Verse 6. O house of Israel, can I not do what you, with you as this powder does? So what God is saying, if I don't like what you're doing, I'm going to break you. And restart you. So see, that's why we don't advance because we try to do, so many people try to do things their way. And when we try to do things our way, we're not going to advance. We're going to stay the same. And God's got to do something. He has to destroy it. And we have to, he has to break us and we have to restart again and do it God's way. So this is what he said to Jeremiah. This is a message you're going to take. That if I don't like the way you live, I'm going to break you. And you're going to start living the way I said. So if you are truly my disciples. So we see that sometimes we don't advance in our life, in our Christian life. Because we're doing it our way. And we see troubles in the marriage. We see troubles in the family. We see troubles in, in many places, in so many ways, because we're not living according to God's will. God says, I'm going to, I came to bless you, and I came to bless you in abundance, he said. So why can we live that way? Why? Because we're doing it our way, and that's not the way it is. Verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1. The words of, the, of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, one of the priests of a, one of the priests at Anathoth, in the territory of Benjamin, the word of the Lord came to him in the 13th year of the reign of Josiah, son of Amon, king of Judah. And through the reign of Je 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 
Kaim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, down to the fifth month of the 11th year of Zedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah, when the people of Jerusalem went into exile, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I form you, in the womb, I knew you before you were born. I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the, to the nations. So God is telling you, him, you know, I don't know how long he repeated this word, the same message, for him, to, for him to understand. And sometimes God keeps repeating the same message to us. And then and, and we get tired. He says, well, you know, same message again. Uh, same message again. Oh, uh, no. Well, yeah, he's giving the same message again. He's repeating the same word because we still don't obey. Finally, he gets it, you know, and then he, he tries to excuse himself. Well, no, 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 wait, wait, I don't know how to speak. Where is our heart at the time to be where Jesus commanded us to be? Yeah. Excuse me. He tells them right here in verse 5, Jeremiah 1, 1, 5. Before I formed you in the womb of knew you, before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet of the nations. So we were called to be God's voice. We were called to be God's voice. And see, we have to be convinced that we were called with a supernatural power. You know, when the disciples, God sent them out to a mission, they came back. And they were so joy joyful, you know, they were so happy because, e, Jesus, you know, all those demons, you know, they submitted to us. Oh, boy, he says, don't, don't, don't be so happy of what the, you did with the demons. Be happy that your, your, your names are written in the book of life. Amen. So, so look at what Isaiah says, you know, we have to be convinced of this. That God gave us this supernatural power. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Isaiah 55 verse. verse uh, what's it right there? Um, eight. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways. Declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than, than the earth. So are my ways higher than our ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. And the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering, it, watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I send it. So, so you see in verse 8 right here? This is what's going to happen with my word that goes out of your mouth. Because you are my vessel. You are my instrument. It is going to do everything I, I said it is going to do. If you keep it, if you are my instrument, you are a worshiper, you are obedient, it's going to do. You are my voice. You are go, it's going to happen. Everything you say is going to happen. But if you're not living my word, it's going to harm you, you know. It's not going to be good for you. So, so if we are preaching, if we are teaching, if we're not living the word, we're not role models or inspiring the people, we're in trouble. That means we're not believing God's word. Because in order for God for, to bless his word and, and be effective through us, we have to believe it. It means if we believe it, we have to live it. And if we're not living it, we're, in, we're going to be in trouble whether you believe it or not, but that's how it is. Because the Bible clearly says that we are justified when we hear and we do. We are hearers and we are doers. Not only hearers, but doers. That's why there's so many people that are not true Christians because we preach, we, we teach, but we're not role models. We're not, we're not living the word the way it says. So we're not creating a, a true true Christianity, it's just that, you know, we've been, we change, yeah, I have knowledge, yeah, but we have not been transformed, we're not living the word. I want to evangel, I want to be an evangelist, but I don't evangelize. I want to be a minister and teach and preach, but 
I don't live the word. We have to be role models for God to bless us, to be effective overall to please God. Verse 6, I say, uh, Jeremiah 1, verse 6. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you and say whatever I command you. So you see how we're going to be affected? When God called me, I, don't know, I didn't know how to preach. I didn't know how to do all this. Even my, the way I spoke, you know, was Spanglish. But God says, it's not going to be you. It's going to be me through you. So I go to my wife and I say, look, uh, the Lord's calling me. I'm going to be a, 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 an evangelist, preacher, pastor. She laughed at me and she said, you know, no way. And I said this, the worst. But it's not going to be me. It's going to be God through me. Because I have told God, you know, God, what, how am I going to be your, your, your speaker? How am I going to preach? How, you know, I, I, I speak Spanglish. And he says, read my word and I will teach you. Read my word. So that's how I left that kind of language. By reading the word of God, you know, my language, I began to speak differently. And when I told my wife, it's not going to be me, it's going to be God through me, he didn't, she didn't say nothing no more. Okay? Okay, she said. So when we start doing things for God and we start being obedient to God and, and allow him to use us, if we're going to change, we're going to be transformed also. And he will use us in many ways. So he, so he says, Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. Too young. The Lord said to me, do not say that. It is me. It's nothing about you. You must go to everyone and said, and I send you to and say whatever I command you. You know, how many times have the Lord said to us, go here and go there. And we say, well, no, I can't go. I got to work. No, I, I can't. I got to do something else. We dare to say that to the Lord. It's like we have not understood the scriptures. It's like we have not understood God. You know, when he came to the disciples before they became disciples, they were working. And he came right there to the Jordan River. And he, and, and he got hit the, Simon's boat and, and he went into the water and he started talking to all of them. And then he got out of the boat and then he called them out, come on, let's go fishing. And Peter says, well, hey, I, I, we've been fishing all night long. We didn't catch nothing. But, but in your word, and you were because I believe you, I'm, we're going to go in. And, and they went in. And after they fished, they caught all those fish and they came to shore. God says, now follow me. And they did this. The Bible says they left everything. And they follow him. So what happens? Well, what is different from us? That today we can give excuses. Oh, I can't do this day. I got to work. Oh, I you know, sometimes it's true and sometimes we lie. Oh, I, I got to sleep. I'm too tired. You know, and we're tired, you know. <laughs> You know who's the one that's answering right there? Sloth. The lazy demon. He's getting us too tired so we don't serve the right. We don't serve God the way he says to serve him. But if it was, if it was for a party or something else, yeah, we'd be there. Yeah, yeah, sure. Y'all may sleep tonight. It's okay, I'll sleep later. Really? The power of God's word, the Bible in the mouth of a righteous man is powerful and is effective. And the reference is James 5, 16. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that, may, so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and is effective. So why is, not that, why is that not happening in our lives? What well, it is happening, but not in us sometimes, because we're not being affected. Why? Because we're doing our own thing. We're living our own lives, not for Christ, but for ourselves. And we need to be careful on these things. That it's got to be for Jesus Christ and what He says. 
If I know tomorrow I got to be in church and tomorrow I know I have to serve God, I better rest today. Because he's, gonna go, he's not going to be pleased to, if I come up with the excuse, oh, I, I'm tired today. He's not going to be pleased with that. He's going to replace us sooner or later. We're only harming ourselves and our families. We can't blame nobody else if we're not being obedient to God. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 8. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See today, I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, so this, to, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. See, so the day God calls us and we accept and we are truly called, he says he's going to touch our lips. It's going to be him speaking from then on, not us anymore. So we need to allow the Holy Spirit to use us. We need to allow him to speak through us. We need to allow him to do the work for God through us. We will never have any needs. I can, I can testify to that, that in my 29 years as a pastor, I never had any needs. God has always provided somehow. Somehow. Amen? You know, in my house, this is testimony. Our front yard, my lawn, my lawn was not too good. And this other guy came by. He says, don't worry about the money, okay? I'll get it for you. I'll, I'll do it for you. They took all the grass out. And then they threw the concrete right by the, like a little sidewalk, right by the, by, by the wall so the water won't keep going down. Then they built a, a, a little wall on the side so, you know, the, because the, the, whatever was there were getting run. So they fixed it all up and it's all ready to plant. What did it cost me? Nothing. Why? Because God always provides. God always takes care of us. Did I ask for it? I didn't ask for it. I didn't ask for it. In this testimony, just to say, you know, God will always provide. And he's always done that for me through my lifetime. Through this, all this time, the 29 years that I've been pastoring. And the same thing he will do for you when we start doing God's work. He will do the rest. He will do the rest. For you also. And so it says, I have put, verse 9, then the Lord reached out, to, out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. And this is what's going to happen when you speak. Verse 10, see, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. You see how powerful God's word is going to be in our mouth when we, are, when we become righteous, when we start obeying God? That we will do things to please him. God is confirming, confirming that he is over Jeremiah for what he speaks. It will come to pass. God is telling Jeremiah, God is telling you and me. Whatever I speak through you, if you become loyal, become faithful to me, this is what's going to happen. Everything you say is going to come to pass. The word of the Lord, verse 11, Jeremiah 1, 11, The word of the Lord came to me. What do you see, Jeremiah? I see the branch of an almond tree. I replied. The Lord said to me, You have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. You see that? I am making sure that what you speak, Jeremiah, is going to come to pass. I am here. I am behind, I am watching Highland that whatever you do is going to come to pass. 13. The word of the Lord came to me again. What do you see? I see a pot that is boiling. I answered, it is tilting toward us from the, from the north. The Lord said to me, from the north, disaster will be poured out on all who live in the land. I am about to summon all the people of the northern kingdoms, declares the Lord. 
their kings will come and set up their thrones and the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. They will come against all the her surrounding walls and against all the towns of Judah. I will pronounce my judgment on my people, on my people, on my people because of their wickedness, their disobedience, and forsaking me, and burning incense to other gods and on and in, in worshiping what their hands have made. In other words, we have become idolaters. It's my will, not God's will. We are living our lives. We're not living the lives for Christ. And so he says what he says here. Look, it's not that devil is going to harm you. It's going to be me, he says. Because today we speak a, 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 about a God that he's so loved. He's so lovable. He's going to take care of us. He doesn't chastise anybody. Well, he's saying differently right here. If you don't obey me, it's going to come a time that I'm going, to, I'm going to send destruction into your life. Because that's the only way you can come to me. And the purpose, the, the reason I'm going to send destruction into your life, you know, the enemy into your life, is so that you can seek me, so, so that you can repent on your wickedness and so you can be saved. So see, sometimes we bring... Uh, destruction into our lives, troubles into our lives because we're walking away from God and we don't even see it, we don't even know it. So destruction sometimes, trouble has to come to our lives so we can turn to God and run to Him and repent of what we're doing and do it right and start doing things right. Again, verse 15. I'm about to summon all the people of the northern kingdoms, declares the Lord. Look, he speak, he's, God is speaking. Their kings will come and set up their thrones and the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. They will come against all her surroundings, wall, surrounding walls and against all the towns of Judah. I will pronounce my judgment on my people because of their wickedness and forsaking me and burning incense to other gods and in worshiping what their hands have made. Judgments, they're already in the Bible. What does God's word says? We call to be, we were called to be God's voice. Or we could be broken if we don't obey. A reference is John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. For the Jews who had believed in him, who? The ones that believe in him. Jesus said, and behold, to my teachers, you are really my disciples. Now he's talking to the ones, to the true believers. He says, if you live my word, what does the Bible say? You will truly be my disciples. Not because you come to church. You don't become a cow because you go into a stable. You got to be born one. You have to be born in Jesus Christ, truly believe to be saved, to be truly a Christian. Many people will we call themselves Christians, but in Judgment Day, the test is going to be there. Who is the real Christian? So, verse 32. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So he says right here clearly in verse 31. If you believe, he says to the ones that believe, he said, you look, in verse 31. If you hold to my teachings, you are, you are really my disciples. And if you hold to my teachings, if you become obedient, I will give you revelation of my word. Verse 32, I will reveal my will to you. I will reveal what you read in the word of God. Are you, uh, you will have revelation of the, of the Bible. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free and you will become truly free. Verse 17, Jeremiah 1, 1 17. Get yourself ready. Stand up and say to, the, to, the, to them whatever I command you. Do not be terrified by them, or I will terrify you before them. Today I have made you a fortified city and an iron pillar and a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. In other words, you know, God tells uh, Jeremiah, go tell them this. I want to bring judgment upon their lives. God, if I tell them, they're going to kill me. God, if, if, if I say all this to them, their kings and, and all these armies, they're going to kill me. And God says, don't be, don't be afraid of them. I'm with you. And if you don't do that, you don't do this, I will put you to shame in front of them. So you see what God is saying here? Either we start, we get it, we start obeying him, or we will be shamed in different ways 
in everybody's presence. What is this guy doing? Teaching, preaching, he's calling himself a Christian. And when trials come, when tests come, they're failing. In other words, God didn't give us a choice. You will say, you will speak what I tell you, what the Bible says, or I will put you to shame in front of people, declares the Lord. And see, the only way we can do this is when we ask God, you know, God, please help me. Help me to be loyal to you. Help me to be faithful to you, Father. Help me that I, that I can always please you only. That is no longer me, but it's you. Jesus said, it's not my will, but your will. That's what we must say. That's why it starts with prayer. God, I need your help right here. Please stand. Father God, we thank you for the message, Father. We pray, I pray, Father, you will bring revelation to every mind, every soul, Father, and every heart here. And all those that are listening to us also, Father, through online, Father. I pray that you will bring revelation to us and you will help us also to become obedient to your word and live a life that will please you, Father. Bless us with your word, Father. And forgive us for our failures and our sins, Father. Help us to live lives that will please you always. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Your brother James is going to dismiss.